All right, y'all. So here we are. We're at the last bath. So the story behind this, y'all, is all start, you know, pretty much like where our village at. We have the um story of it. I'm gonna show y'all. I put it up on one of my videos a while back, but in our village in Oyaba, we have a um punishment. That's how they punish them. So, like I was saying, it was, um, it was, um, you'll see on our wall in the village where you're in the Fonty language talking about the last bath. And it'd be similar to this where you see them, how they had them chain it up. So, and you see how they walk them to the castle. So, in our village from there all the way over here, they will walk them here, give them their last bath, and then walk them all the way back to the dungeon which was past, past us uh, all the way back to Cape. And it take us in vehicle to get here like 45 minutes. So you can imagine that walk during that time. And it was um, bushy, you know, they say wild animals and stuff. And those slaves that got too weak to move or slowing it down, and you had those animals. So for the slave masters and the slaves to get away, they would take the weak slaves and throw them to the animals before they can get away and stuff. So these are some of the things that um happening you know? see there's a lot of stuff that's not being taught here in the Ghana school a lot of them don't know the history with bits and pieces but hey we're gonna get there time for the people to wake up all right y'all we going in be back Information office over here. So we can find out. Yeah, oh my. Let me keep washing. W E the boss. You know I'm talking about people. Y'all scared, afraid to show up, but everybody else is showing up. So why y'all not showing up? Come on now. Get over here and get some support. Forget about Europe and Italy and, and all the other places. We need y'all to come here and enjoy Africa like everybody else. Please come now. All right, y'all. See, now I have to walk them out over there. Mm -hmm. We're at the Slave River, y'all. Board over here. 
just wait and take the little tour and we'll be back all right now oh i got to turn the camera all right Oh no, that's a while. I'll play catch up, y'all. Mm -hmm. Ago. Ago. Ago means knock knock. Oh, oh. I have your attention. So, what do they say? I mean, I mean, I forgot. I mean, I mean, I go, 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 and eventually shipped out of this land to the new world. But before we embark on this journey in the memories of the ancestors that we've lost, I shall ask that we take just one minute of our time to have a silent moment for the ancestors and after the one minute silence, I will say may their souls rest in perfect peace and we shall all respond by saying Ashe. Ashe is a Yoruba word that literally means so Yoruba. shall it be. Mm -hmm. So please, let's take a minute of silence. May the spirit of our lost ancestors rest in perfect peace. Ashe. Ashe. An awareness of our past is essential to the establishment of our personalities and our identities as Africans. That's a quote from Emperor Haile Selassie. From Marcus Messiah Garvey Jr., actually borrowed by Bob Marley. Emancipate yourselves from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. Mm -hmm. On this land, among the people of Benin, Togo and Ghana, we have this common African proverb we stated, until the tales of the hunt is told by the lions, the hunt will always glorify the hunters. Hmm. For centuries our ancestors were shipped out of this land, they survived the chains and shackles, survived every single other act, Jim Crow lynching segregation, they survived it all. All this is like a history that we need to know. And it's something that we need to know about our ancestors. But then they don't allow us to teach it in our schools. Mm -hmm. A typical example is United States of America. Mm. They call mm. it critical race theory. I ask myself, what is it about the history that is critically racial? And then I get three answers. <laughs> Number one, our ancestors spent 400 years in the chains and shackles across oceans to the new world, 6,000 miles away. They survived everything. That survival was more like an empowerment for us as African ch children across the world. When you know about your ancestors, you become powerful. Information, they say, is power. Once kept away from the people who are supposed to benefit from it, they are being rendered powerless. So if you don't know nothing about yourselves, they will be able to manage and corner you to a particular place that you will not like but then you see as africans we are not people who just give up we fight till the end our brothers and sisters are taking up that as a challenge to travel across oceans to this particular land to learn a bit of their own culture a bit of their own true identities and what their ancestors left behind but then they don't want us knowing about all these things. Mm. That's mm. why many of us are finding it even difficult to get visas to this place. 
to come and then see this one. They don't want us to. How hard does it take for you to move from America to uh, Europe? In England or mm -hmm. how long? <laughs> Easy. We didn't have to think of an idea. You get a visa, mm -hmm. then you go. Because they are allies, they, you will spend here and they get something in return. Mm -hmm. But then if you spend in Africa, yeah, it doesn't really get there. <laughs> they rather come and then steal from us than give back. Yeah. So our brothers and sisters going through these, all these difficulties to know their true self, their true identity, their heritage and culture. But they don't want that for us because they will be able to, they won't be able to uh, counter attack us or either compete with us on the same level ground anymore. <laughs> See, the second point is similar, but not. When we get to know about our ancestors, we teach our younger ones. The little ones are very young and every information they know, they want to share it among their friends. And so they'll go to schools and be sharing the same information with their brothers and sisters. You see, the walls have ears. Hmm. They are listening. A kid like that age would want to know more friends we're talking about. So when they get home, they are going to ask their parents the question. They'll ask their fathers, brothers. But then, they are the ones telling us that 400 years is a long time and we should forget about it and move on. Do you think they are going to tell anything or say anything to their children? They will never probably sit with them. They will tell them that, oh, I don't remember. But they do. But scared of talking about it. Shy of talking about it. So many get it. Our ancestors were in the chains and shackles. They are thinking about how the message... So they are not even giving up. I mean, uh, uh, rendering an apology. Many of them tried in a way, but they don't get it. So then, the final one, the final point, is that they are really, really scared of our reaction. They are thinking that when we get to know the entire story, we will react in a way hey, your phone that ring. we react hey, to us. Your phone ring. You see? They are thinking Please that it, if you get to know the entire story, you are going to react in a way that they will react. If they were the ones in our mm -hmm. shoes. And that's why they are keeping the history away from reaching us. But today you are on a land that was once upon a time lost to the ancestors. Long before the arrival of the Europeans here. Our ancestors too. live on a very big vast land. The oldest known name of the land was Akebulan. The word Akebulan simply means land of humanity. Mother of all creations and others call it Garden of Eden. And so when you look around the entire continent, Africa, hmm? you realize that we have uh, absolutely everything. Hmm. But the only thing we are struggling with is how to use our own resources. And so the Europeans have had that as an advantage over us. A couple of centuries, it didn't happen. Hmm. So when the ancestors got to this particular place and all that, they had already walked for so many miles, they were so tired. And then they managed to get to the dungeons and then they still survived everything. You see, Europeans started, I mean, connecting with us. During the year 1400s, they started sailing across oceans, exploring as they termed it, getting to know people's culture and changing it. And so they made their very first contact with the African continent. And that was when they had to move in and when they got here, they realized that many of us, under the sun, we glow and shine. And so when they saw it, they named the land Africa. The word Africa simply means children of the sun or people of the sun. They were here with us. By 1471, they actually came to, into contact with this part. Where we are now is Ghana now in the days, but then, back then, it was called gold coast by these Europeans. Mm -hmm. The Portuguese who get, got to this place were led by Prince Henry the Navigator. By 1482, they requested for a land to build their very first fortress at Edina. In Elmina, they built their very first castle or dungeon. Named it St. George's Castle. After a couple of centuries, many reasons, they built several others. The Dutch the Danish, the Spanish, the British, all of them have so many spots 
all along the coast of West Africa. But before they got to this particular site, our people had already fought among themselves and it was based on territorial expansion. Those ind indigenous warfares gave birth to war victims that their ancestors actually inducted into their territories and were practicing a system called indentured servitude. Mm. Freedom, they were free to go by doing their normal routine jobs. But the only thing is that they don't get to practice their own practices, but mm. then practice the one that they have been inducted into. Mm. For a couple of decades, that was how it was until they made their very first contact with this land. Nearer to the 1500s, after invading the Ameri Americas, taking the people in Massachusetts and eating virus hostage and were using them there, the Native Americans were not doing well. One of their kind, called Bartolomeo de las Casas, a Spanish Portuguese Roman Catholic priest, came up with a suggestion that African men and women are very much stronger than the indigenous people of the land, so they should come to Africa and get the people. Mm. And so they sailed across oceans to this particular land. They met with Prince Henry, the navigator, and his group. The idea came up, and then they picked it up. They went to the chiefs. Now that they've been here for a couple of decades to get to know our people, they went to the chiefs, telling them that if they don't change that system of indentured servitude, it's going to put their lives in uh, jeopardy. Because most of these warriors, or people you captured from the warfare, are most, of the, most of them are warriors. So then, if you keep them there, this gentleman living along with you will get to know about your strength and weaknesses. If they strike, there is nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. Let us help you out. We have weapons. All these at our disposal will provide you with some. Protect your territories, and in return you shall pay us. The proposal was for the ancestors to give them the victims of war to be taken away. Mm. At this point, I call my ancestors naive, because they believe strangers over their own people. Mm. Mm gave out the victims of wars, and they claimed guns, guns and gunpowder spirits, and there several other goods. And for that reason, they were always saying we sold each other. And of course, I believe that we did sold each other. Because if we hadn't taken the guns and gunpowder in return, or those goods in return, then we never sold. Hmm. And for the fact that we took it, it simply means we have sold them. And for a couple of decades, they were basing the uh, uh, supplies on the victims of wars. But it got to a time that demand started growing out in, in the new world. The Dutch, the Danish, the Spanish, the British, the French came in search of the same thing that the